Do you know, I get the odd tweet or the odd message every now and then saying that I am too biased in favour of Sky and that I don't cover what's going on in Box Nation enough and I don't cover the fighters over there enough. So let's break it down. I want to talk to you about a few updates um, we have with the Box Nation fighters at present. I'm not going to do it on you know, loads of separate videos. I'm just going to make this a sort of Box Nation update special if you like. And to be honest, there's quite a bit to talk about. I must admit, I'm, um, it's a possibility some of you guys watching this video will be better informed than me, because it's one or two of their fighters, one or two of their fights, that I'm pretty confused about at the minute, and, you know, if you could provide any clarification, I'd be pretty grateful. But let's start with um, the news today that Terry Flanagan is off the December Manchester bill. I mean, at present, with Box Nation, and I know things happen in boxing. I mean, boxing's a sport which involves punching another man as hard as you can in the face. You can break your hand, or you can break their face. It's as simple as that. So I do understand that people pull out of boxing fights, and you know, people have to withdraw for injuries and for other reasons, and you know, things like that happen. But I must say, the pullout rate here of um, the pullout rate of big fighters in on Frank Warren cards at the minute has been, you know, pretty high. I must say, I myself have been a victim of this to an extent. Uh, I've been to two Frank Warren bills in the last couple of years, and on both times, we lose. You do lose some big names off the bill. I mean, I remember I went to his. Um, I think it's called Royal Britannia show at Wembley Arena, and uh, Ricky Burns and Billy Joe Saunders pulled off that bill. I think memory serves. I even went to David Hay, Derek Chisora, and I was really looking to see Alexander Povetkin, who was scheduled to fight Hassim Ratman on the bill, and that's been withdrawn. I mean, humorously, we had the World War Three bill that was known because we had three World War, uh, three world title fights uh, on the bill, but we had uh, Liam Smith's opponent withdraw, although he was replaced by another challenger. We had, um, obviously, Billy Joe Saunders versus... Uh, you know, uh, Andy Lee postponed due to injury. And people were saying, so we just call it World War One rather than World War Three after the, the two pullouts. So I'm surprised that Flanagan has pulled out of this bill because it seems that he's just pulled out based on the fact that uh, he's tired and he's had a bit of a tough year on it. And I mean, fair enough to the guy, you know, if you, you're going into back-to-back -back world title fights and keeping busy at this elite level... Uh, I can imagine it is quite tiring um, going through all the camps and cutting weight and getting yourself in prime condition for the fights. What I would say is that both of his world title fights have ended pretty quickly. He hasn't had pretty tough fights in them, so I'm surprised that a guy like him would want to withdraw from a fight due to fatigue. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, I've read that Flanagan and Derry Matthews were scheduled to meet on the undercard of that Saunders Lee bill. And, that would have been a real, real strong bill. Two all-British world title fights had that occurred. So that's disappointing. So Terry Flanagan's off the bill. Um, we're waiting news of you know where he's going to next reappear. I understand that Derry Matthews is going to appear on that on the card, but it just seems a bit odd that I know maybe if it, I don't know whether it had been formally announced or not. Let's say it was penciled in. Uh, it's been reported on Boxing Scene this, by the way. So. It's most likely true, but it looks like he's off the bill due to fighting too much this year or, or something of that nature, which seems a bit odd to me. Now, at the same time, uh, it looks like Frank Warren and Box Nation are looking to make Liam Smith versus uh, the sugar man himself, Mr. Mosley. Um, you know, and Mosley's on boxing scene talking about a rematch clause for that fight and saying that He's not 100% sure he can commit to a rematch clause as he's penciled in for another fight in 2016. And if he knocks Liam Smith out in one round, the fans won't want to see a rematch and it's not viable. Um, you know, that's a real, a bit of a coup from Big Frank if he's got that, uh, if he's got that fight arranged. Because to be honest, I see that as a low risk, high reward fight. Liam Smith is one of these guys. He's not going to be known globally at this stage. He's not going to be a... A big name in the States, but a big fight with uh, um, Sugar Sane Mosley is really going to catapult him into the public arena. You know, Mosley's obviously a, a massive name globally. He's, I guess, he's a surefire Hall of Famer. And he's a guy who, this stage, the, at this stage of his career, really appears to my eye to be a faded version of himself. You know, Liam Smith, he's a very, very solid, competent, all round capable fighter. 
I'm yet to be convinced personally that he's a world beater, but I think fighting Mosley at £154 is certainly a bigger name fight than fighting Andrade or Charlo or Lara. You know, Mosley's got more star power, more sort of public recognition than those guys. But in my opinion, it's an easier fight for Liam Smith and it's a winnable fight at this stage. So, you know, what a coup that would be. Mosley himself has gone to the media to talk about this fight, so it is likely that it is something that they're working on. I can't imagine Mosley comes cheap, so, uh, you know, Big Frank will have to put his hand in his pocket in order to, to get that fight made. But, yeah, that would be that would be a real coup for Box Nation if they got that sorted. Finally, I just wanted to talk Billy Joe Saunders versus Andy Lee. I mean, like everyone else, you must be sick to the sick to death of seeing these guys having a press conference. And I saw a video that my uh, good friend Ultra Tech Sports did the other day when he was talking about uh, you know these guys being overly respect respectable and you know he's got a point I'm not saying that everyone's got to go around uh, behaving like an aggressive uh, bad man for want of a better word but you know sitting there listening to these two guys having press conferences over and over again talking about how much they respect the other one you know it's a bit like what's in paint dry after some time what I do find interesting is there's growing rumours online that Andy Lee has already made some sort of agreement to fight Gennady Golovkin um, after this fight now, for me, I find that intriguing because I think Billy Joe Saunders is going to win. I think, you know, I've done videos on this elsewhere, still online if you want to look them up. But in terms of a stylistic breakdown and how I see this fight developing, I see Andy Lee um, being outboxed by Billy Joe Saunders. So it's interesting if he really has already been talks with Gennady Golovkin about a fight afterwards. There's the potential that he's overlooking Saunders. I mean, I know the two camps have some previous dealings with each other, because, I mean, historically, uh, there have been talks of Andy Lee Golovkin fight. I believe that fight got um, cancelled because Golovkin's father passed away. So, uh, you know, potentially they're already on speaking terms and they're already dealing with each other. But, yeah, I think it would be a bit presumptuous of Andy Lee to, to move forward and, uh, you know, book a fight with Golovkin uh, ahead of uh, a fight with Billy Joe Saunders. But, I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's some big potential there. Uh, for Box Nation as a channel, you know, if you if you've got Andy Lee Golovkin, uh, Liam Smith versus um, Mosley, and if you've got Flanagan versus Derry Matthews, all of those coming, you know, in the next six months, that's some big big cards for Box Nation. So potentially exciting times for the channel. Uh, it's they've been unfortunate. They've had some bad luck this year. Obviously, the Tyson Fury situation was. A bit of a disaster. Or a Chris Eubank Jr. situation was a bit of a disaster. Two fighters that they'd helped get into promising positions who then, for whatever reason, moved to another broadcaster. They've had bad luck with fights getting cancelled, um, you know, like the um, the Andy Lee Billy Joe Saunders fight. So it's been a tough, tough run of luck for them. And you do have to wonder if it's a, you know, sometimes it appears like a bit of a soap opera with fights continuously getting uh, cancelled and with. You know, guys like Chris Eubank Jr. and Tyson Fury getting into sort of uh, semi-public rows with the channel about the broadcasting rights. It's, it's all a bit bizarre, but exciting times nonetheless. Let me know your take on these things. I wanted to cover it. I wanted to get some Box Nation chat going on the channel. I do support Box Nation. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of the channel. It's good that Sky have some competition. I think if Box Nation became more of a force, it would perhaps mean that Sky didn't get away with putting on the uh, the crap that we had to suffer last week. But let me know your thoughts on this. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Flanagan. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Liam Smith Mosley. And I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Andy Lee potentially agreeing to fight Golovkin before the Saunders fight. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, do give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.